So today I'm going to walk you through a simple process for building a, a simulation model using this software program called JamSim. Uh, I've chosen JamSim because to me it's it's nice and simple. It's an easy program, fairly easy program to use. It doesn't have uh, all the same features as some of the more expensive and commercial programs do, but but that's good for our purposes. So we, we're not, it, it's not so confusing to use. There's not a ton of things to figure out all at once. Um, but it's still representative of other simulation software packages out there. It's uh, still a very, very powerful simulation program. I find it works very, very well. Um, and it works in a similar manner as other simulation software packages. So if you learn how to use JamSim, um, for your first model or two, then you haven't wasted your time. You'll be able to take what you've learned in using this and easily transport it over to using um, one of the more expensive commercially available simulation software programs. What I'm going to walk you through over the course of the next hour is uh, choosing a process to simulate. Uh, then documenting the process, essentially coming up with a kind of a storyboard um, so that you have the information available or you, you've analyzed the process and understand the flow. Um, I'm going to have you use a SIPOC diagram. Um, I'll just pause for a moment. Has, has anybody used a SIPOC yet or has SIPOC come up yet in your lean course? Yeah, I lean course. Right. So who can tell me what SIPOC stands for? Supplier input process output customer. Beautiful. And it's the perfect kind of document for us for, for our purposes in creating a simulation model. I want to point out that there's some different processing types when it comes to building a simulation. Um, not all processes are created equal, and so sometimes you may have to use one of the more complicated process types. So I want to introduce you to a couple. Uh, and then we'll go into actually building the model in JamSim. So to me, step one is to actually pick a process and uh, I'll just pause for a minute. You guys can see my the PowerPoint screen that I'm flipping through. Or I should be sharing it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Great. And actually, I think I can. If I do that, I'll make it nice and big. All right. These software programs they're totally generic. They they come with a blank slate and uh, like a it's like a CAD program in a way, and so you can use it to design almost any process um, and of course some processes are going to be more complicated than others some you would need to study this program in detail to be able to simulate your process well and and other ones are fairly trivial so uh, for your first exercise if you if you're going to use JamSim for this assignment or just you want to learn how to use this program I would recommend starting with something that is a pretty straightforward process and that is in terms of simulation Something like I've drawn here at the top, where raw material comes into the process. Maybe it's a piece of wood or a block of steel or something like that. And it's um, sent into the first processing step. There's some work done on it, um, like you know, a simple machining operation or something. Then it goes to the next process where there's maybe some more machining. Maybe it goes from a turning machine or a milling machine, something like that, to uh, a, uh, a different mach milling machine or a grinding machine or something. Maybe then it goes to a heat treat process uh, or something, then a painting process or a finishing process, then maybe a final inspection and out the door. So this, uh, so that's the easiest kind of a process to model is something where one thing at a time enters into the process sequence, gets worked on, passed on, passed on, passed on, and exits the system or delivered to a customer or to some other process. You, you could be modeling like a sub-assembly. 
you know, building a, uh, building a transmission or building a bicycle gear set or something like that. If um, sometimes though, especially if you're building an assembly kind of a process, you'll find that raw materials come in at different points. M maybe there's um, there's some fasteners that have to have to be attached. So you do maybe there is some of this machining process and some painting process, but at some point a couple of parts get bolted together. So now the process chain needs the other part and needs the bolts or needs the fastening to be brought into the model. Um, it's an extra level of complication, but you can certainly do it with these programs. So there's an assembly process. You can also follow some processes that collect a bunch of parts together, process them at once, and then pass them on as a big package. Um, operations like heat treatment, for example, are good examples of that, where individual parts might be machined one at a time, machine, 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 and then uh, 50 of them are all put into the furnace all at once in a bunch of baskets, and the furnace or the heat treat process happens on all 50 parts at once, and then the doors open and all 50 parts move to the next line. And in Jam sim, that's considered to be a pack uh, and then a corresponding unpack operation. So they're all, all those parts are put into a container. In this case, it's like put into a furnace. Um, but it could also be like a literal packing operation, maybe a, like a bottling plant. Uh, each of the bottles is filled one after the other, but then 12 of them or 24 or whatever number goes into a, an actual box and gets boxed together. So. So that's a, also a kind of a process step that you can model. I would recommend starting with a fairly simple process that's you know three to ten separate steps. You can combine a bunch of steps to to simplify it. You know, even though may, there might be a bunch of, especially if there's a bunch of small, very quick sequential steps that happen, you could just draw a circle around them and call that all one process step. And parts come in, and instead of taking uh, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. Maybe it takes five minutes to go through this one single process block that you define. You, you define the process however you want. And my final suggestion here is if you can't visualize it or describe it fairly easily or in simple terms to someone, then it's probably not a good choice to use as a first model. Uh, you should be able to describe it fairly simple, simply to somebody and say, I got a process, it takes this as its input, and you do this, 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 then this, then this, and, and it's finished. Great. If you can describe it like that, you've got yourself a good process to start with. Um, two suggestions for you. Um, I'll start with the second one on the high of list to hear first is pick a process that you already know. If you've uh, kind of jokingly said, you know, if you've worked at a fast food restaurant or something like that, model the process that you've followed at the restaurant. You know, like uh, making a pizza is a, a nice, simple process to use. Um, or just, you know, <laughs> building bicycles. Or um, if you do some machining work or something like that, or you can imagine, like, just make up an invented process of some simple machining. You know, that's fine too, that's great. Um, like I say, these models are not restricted to manufacturing processes. It can be literally anything. So maybe if you worked at a grocery store or a supermarket or something like that, you could model the, the process of receiving materials, unpacking it, then a box for sorting and a box for pricing, and then another box, process box for putting product on the shelves. It doesn't matter physically where these things happen. We're creating, um, almost creating a, um, a value stream map, which you will also be taking in your lean courses, where it's just a conceptual map of the process. It doesn't have to be a, 
physical, match any kind of a physical layout at all. Although it can be. Um, in my earlier demonstration of this, I think I showed you uh, like a model of an airport and it literally has passengers moving around, baggage being moved around, sitting in waiting rooms or at, at the gate, getting onto airplanes and airplanes taking off. So the model can be fully three-dimensional and fully to scale if you'd like them to be. But again, for purposes of this exercise and for your first attempt, I would just do a really simple, simple process and don't worry about any kind of physical layout. Another suggestion that I have, if, if nothing comes to mind, um, I invite you just go on to YouTube. It's a great resource. There is a, an actual series called How It's Made, but you can also just, go, just do a YouTube search for how it is made or how it's made, and you'll find quite a nice long list of videos of all kinds of cool things and, and showing you how they're made. And some videos are better than others and explains it step by step. Um, but again, for purposes of this exercise, it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to be exact uh, match to the process. I just want you to get some experience in using some simulation software like this to model a process. All right, I'll pause for a moment. Does anybody have any ideas in mind of what, if you were to do this, uh, what you might, what kind of a process you might model? Professor, like, uh, I have a like, question. I think so. We are considering operations here. The like, uh, like for example, anything uh, like uh, we are talking about if, for a supermarket. So, like the receiving, unpacking, sorting, pricing, mm -hmm. production, so that's all the like parts of the operations. Right. So, so we have to consider an operation of a certain like uh, maybe walmart I, um, for example like we have to consider uh, like take one of the example and like then build a uh, this jam sim yeah um exactly and this so my point here is that it doesn't need to be a it doesn't need to be a block of steel that enters the system as a chunk of steel and exits as a as a engine block it could be uh, a a shipment that includes 50 and you know, just 50 products and it and it can, doesn't have to be you don't even have to differentiate what the products are it could just be a, once a day this store receives 50 well <laughs> the numbers have to, you have to come up with some reasonable numbers because it would really, in a day, it would be you know, a whole lot more than 50. But let's say every um, every 30 minutes, a truck shows up with 50 items. And, okay, so now 50 items enter into the system. What do you do? You uh, take them off the truck. So that's a process step. Well, what's the next thing? You open, like unpack the boxes. So now you've got 50 separate items. Okay, that's a process step. Then what do you do? Then what do you do? Then what do you do? And and the process ends when those 50 items go gets out to the storefront to be sold. So it's um, just sort of, yeah, all these different, you, you want something where you're following the operations through and, and this simulation just lets you capture those operations. And then we introduce times, quantities and times and see how things balance and see how material flows through the process. Yeah. Okay. okay. But uh, like this data can can be only be collected by like uh, for some uh, like doing some research. Uh, like for example, you mentioned uh, watching YouTube videos from how it's made. Yeah. But uh, I think so. Like they must not be providing that much of information in those videos because if we are considering like inventory time, because obviously because of certain reasons of yeah. the confidential reasons. Sure, sure. Yeah. And, and that's why I, was, I say, no, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good point to raise, thank you. Um, don't worry about it, like honestly. F fill in the gaps yourself, uh, come up with your own estimates, it's okay. The purpose of this exercise, but, um, Honestly, the purpose of the exercise for, for me to you is to get you in just some experience 
in using this idea of simulation technology. It, the purpose is not to create a beautiful and accurate model of any process at all. Just pick some process, simplify it until that you can actually do it, and then just do it and experiment and play with the system and discover how it works. It, I, I really don't care if you're accurate or not. I, I mean, I'm going to look at your finished model and if it's, uh, I don't know, like, like if, if you clearly haven't even thought about it and it's just garbage, you say the store receives one, one product every day and it, <laughs> and it takes 12 hours to figure out what the price is like you know put in some realistic numbers but that's all i ask just just make a just make an honest effort to try to model some process you you do not need to be it doesn't need to be right it doesn't need to be accurate i'm not going to go to youtube and start collecting times and saying well wait a minute this was a six second process and you said it was only two seconds ah. <laughs> you follow me? That's not the point. So, Professor, for this uh, minimum process steps, how many? Yeah, I'm suggesting, uh, here, I'll come back a slide. So I'm suggesting, to me, somewhere, somewhere between three and ten steps. Okay. okay. Uh, like any less than three steps, and it's not really a process. Yeah. Um, also, so let me, sh here, I will show you. Um, a quick example of what I mean, uh, and hopefully this will run. So here's here's a process that I'm currently mapping out, and I'll and I'll share my model with you. The is deck. It, is the sound coming through? Okay. Sound is too high, but the sound is too high. All right. It's good. Like it's okay. It's a party, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. The part of the skateboard you stand on is made up of several thin sheets of wood called veneers. Inexpensive boards use fewer sheets and lesser quality woods. These high-end boards use a full seven sheets of top quality maple. Only the top and bottom veneer sheets will actually show, so their exposed side is sanded smooth, and the other side gets a coat of glue. The inside sheets, meanwhile, go through the glue spreader, which saturates both sides. This adhesive is specially formulated to withstand vibration and shock. Workers stack 35 sheets of veneer, the equivalent of five skateboard decks, and place them in a mold. Skateboards vary in size and shape, so there's a different mold for each model. A press applies 40 tons of pressure, compacting the sheets and bending them to the shape of the mold. Excess glue squeezes out the sides, bonding the five decks into one block. They'll be separated later. The block comes out after three hours. So I'll just pause it and say this is where I'm modeling that as a pack operation. I'm kind of saying they, they, they put all these separate veneers into a package and then this package gets processed on. Uh, it's making my model a little complicated and I might change my mind later, but right now that's what I'm drawing. But the veneers were processed individually. So you got a bunch of veneers, then individually sanded, then packed into this glue stack. Now they drill two sets of holes through the block. These are for mounting the front and back trucks, the pivoting metal axles that enable the skateboard to turn. Now it's time to give the rectangular block a skateboard contour. They select a template in the general shape of the model they're making. It has pins underneath that fit snugly in the truck holes they just drilled. This holds the template still while they do what's called the rough cut, sawing around the template, leaving a two and a half centimeter margin. Cutting off the excess separates the five decks. Now they contour each deck individually. Using a precise template this time, they run the deck against a cutting blade until they have the final shape. Using a router now, they round off the top and bottom edges. Then they smooth all the surfaces against a drum sander. Now they 
switch to a buffer, which uses a combination of brushes and fine grit sandpaper to remove any rough wood fibers. The deck is now perfectly smooth. The next stop is the finishing room, where they first spray the decks with a colorless primer. This seals the pores in the wood veneer so they won't absorb the coat of lacquer that comes next. The primer takes two hours to dry. Next, they spray on a coat of clear or colored lacquer. It leaves a protective, high-gloss finish. The lacquer also takes two hours to dry. This is one of the things I like about this video. It, it gives you little pieces of information like that that are really great for modeling. Okay, it takes two hours to dry for these two processes. The other ones, like the drilling operation, it didn't give you any times, but you can kind of look at it and go, yeah, okay, that's only, like it's less than a minute, or maybe it's a minute, and, and that's good enough. The final step of the finishing process is applying the decoration. The bold graphic designs are printed on plastic sheets. The skateboard factory either buys them ready-made or produces them in-house using its own silkscreen printing equipment. Workers center the design sheet, then feed the deck through a machine that applies heat and slight pressure simultaneously. The heat, 200 degrees Celsius, induces a chemical reaction that melds the ink and lacquer. When the plastic comes off, the deck is finished. Decks of this caliber are sold unassembled in specialty stores. They're okay. So there's a five minute video shows a process and that was great for my purposes. So here's what I thought, uh, kind of a 10 step process then all total. I'm gonna say just make a simple side pocket and I've, and I've got one built to show you. Um, define the entry points, the times, if there's any travel time, big travel times between process steps that that becomes a critical part of the process. You can add those two. I would say keep your model simple. If there's a bunch of short things to, that all happen one after the other. Just treat them as one if you want. Um, uh, some of them are passed through, some of them are assembled, some of them are packaging, great. Um, okay, and I'll get down to number nine. I like doing this myself. I find, and, and I'll demonstrate to you in Jamsim, that if you can add some nice graphics to it, it really does make the model uh, a lot more meaningful and a lot, to me, more interesting to follow. Um, all right, and then consider finding, uh, yeah, so simple graphics. Um, you can make your own or download some, either way. Here's my SIPOC then. Uh, you could, so I only worried about on the supply side for supplier, just whether there was an external supply or not. So there, to this process, there's an external supplier that provides these veneer sheets an external supplier that provides the decals. And for my uh, model, I wanted this final assembly. So I've added to my own process, I'm also adding a wheel and truck assembly at the end. And so I've listed out the process steps from the video. There was a, and you can see here, sand and glue. I add them together as one, um, just as one process step. Then this compacting in that press, then drilling the holes. Um, I even be okay doing rough cutting and final and finish cutting and just sort of so basically just have a shape cutting process and then like routing edges sanding and buffing could as one process step then um, putting on the coats of paint applying the decal and if we wanted a really simple model there we could be done um, oh all right Uh, let's see. Let me jump into JamSim then, and, look, and let's just walk through this quickly. Here's what JamSim looks like when you first load it up. It gives you this three-dimensional space, 
and uh, with grid lines and this axis markers on it. And I, as a first step, I like to just switch over to a 2D view and get rid of the axes and get rid of the grid. So I've got a nice clean, clean looking um, screen to work with. I'm just going to go through this quickly. The, I've got the, I'll have this documented and so you can kind of follow through more at your pace and I'm going to, I'll have this lecture recorded so you can um, go at it at your own pace as well. But you, um, you need, the model has to work on something, like something has to enter the system. So that is always represented by an entity generator. So as far as I know, essentially every model kind of starts with an entity generator. Um, and we'll define what the entity is. That could be this block of wood. It can be the, so in my case, it'll be the veneers, um, block of steel, or uh, the, the truck shipment, whatever. The entity generator will introduce some thing and you have to, so you have to bring in the sim entity to represent the thing itself that you're bringing into the model. And it will go into, it'll produce these or deliver these um, entities, these elements, this raw material into some sort of a queue or kind of inventory. Then you're going to have some uh, server that operates on them. I'm going to just start renaming these things as we go along to, to help kind of understand what's, uh, what I'm talking about. So this is, uh, this would be in my model, this would be the veneer supplier that supplies veneer. Then the first is uh, rough sanding of the veneer. I'll open up my process flow again. It's good practice in each case when you're passing from one operation to another to have it go into a, a queue, even if it's a very short, it's um, unless it gets fed directly from one machine straight into the other machine where there's no chance for any material to stack up in between, then I highly recommend just using, putting a queue in front of each one of your process steps. Now I'm going to really super simplify the model right here. So this is a, uh, glue decks together, then that comes out and goes to another, I don't know why this keeps closing on me, uh, goes to another process, what was after the gluing? Then there was um, Again, I'm going to I'm going to simplify this just to go through because I want to demonstrate this in the time period that we have for the class here. So then, um, cutting out the shapes, uh, then what do we have? Then uh, there's going to be sort of the finishing, sanding, rounding the edges. Then painting, and then uh, adding a label, and I'm going to just to demonstrate what it looks like. I'm going to add a conveyor where it gets sent to the customer, like sh shipped out of the building. And uh, in the simulation models, you have to have some way of, for, for material to exit the system. So it's opposite to one of these entity generators. It's called an entity sink. So this introduces material into the system and this exits or allows material to exit the system. Uh, so I think of entity sinks as being like the customer. So what do we got? Cutting then finishing, 
painting um, applying a decal and going out to the customer. Okay. This is about as complicated as you need to make it. All right, I've, I've, it's okay if yours is just this simple and ignore that things are being packed or unpacked or assembled. Like this is just a nice, super easy set of process steps. Um, in, all right, you as another a next step then, so far this is just a bunch of disconnected process steps. So nothing, there's no flow. We just, I just plunked them onto my screen. Um, so the next thing is to, th these two um, buttons up here, the first one is called show entity flow. And if I click on that, it will, once I start defining the flow, it'll show it to me in arrows. And the next button here is called create entity links. And when I click this, it will, it, it puts me into linking mode, um, which I'll explain. So starting with this raw material is the thing that the veneer supplier is going to use. It supplies into this queue. And I just, as I drag around, this arrow follows me and I'm, I go on to a, the next process step and just click the left mouse button, goes to rough sanding. That delivers to this queue, then gluing, to queue, to cutting, queue, to finishing, Cue to painting. Final cue into the applying the decals onto the conveyor and out to the customer. Now I'm still in this kind of connection mode, so I'm going to come back up here, and you can see it's active right now. This it's sort of a, a little bit of a blue on the box. So I'm going to click this again, and this gets me out of connection mode. I still have this show arrows activated, which is great. It shows me that I've got these, all these nice connections going on. You can make sure that everything's right. If here I can't, little, I can't really see the arrow between this Q6 and the decal, so I can, I'm gonna sort of move this out of the way and, and so I can confirm, yes, it does, it does have the arrows. It's showing the connections properly. Um, just a quick note about keyboard. If you left click anywhere in the model and move your mouse around, it drags the entire model. You can scroll wheel, zoom in and out, which is nice. So you can move around and, and uh, within your model. But if you hit the control, uh, so you can click on any object. But if I just click an object, then go left click and move, I'm still in the model move mode. But if you hit the control key, then it moves the individual object. Um, so it's it's hard to find that instruction anywhere. You have to go and read the Jamsim manual. So uh, left mouse or left mouse with a control key, and that moves objects within the model. It also lets you, if, if instead of clicking and uh, moving the object, with the control key, you can also resize things. All right. I have everything connected now, that's great. I need some to put in some kind of times. There's this input editor, you can see at the bottom of my screen. Um, and it's where we're gonna do most of our inputs on entering modeling times, actual simulation times and details. Uh, it's already populated with this thing called next component. Um, here, let me, um, I'll bring this up here so we can see it. So I'm in the input editor for the veneer supplier, which I haven't spelled right. Uh, the next component is already loaded as Q1 because I did these, I drew the connections already. The first arrival time. So this is when does the first when does the first piece get delivered from the veneer supplier, and its default is at time zero. That's fine. Then how frequently? And I'm going to 
so the default here is uh, 2.7 seconds. I don't want that. I want it to deliver maybe every, I don't know, uh, every 10 minutes. I guess I'm totally making this up. Um, and how many sheets of veneer are going to come in? You kind of have to define your um, your quantities in this. So I'm going to um, I'm going to treat this like it's um, like how many takes a seven veneers per skate board. Mm. Actually, let's. I'm going to pick. 35 uh, because I know I use 35 at a time later you you're gonna play with these numbers so pick something that you want to use as a um, just as a start right now there's absolutely no limit I'm gonna I'm gonna put a limit and say no more than uh, 140 all right then, then I go to my next process, rough sanding. Oh. I'm going to move this down here so it doesn't keep hiding on me. Rough sanding, it's already got the cues defined, but the service time. Um, if you see in my SIPOC, I just, I rounded everything off to the nearest couple of minutes or so. So I said, well, the rough sanding is about a two minute process. The gluing them together, maybe that's a, five minute process. Um, the cutting is a three minute process. I'm just doing this very quickly and it's, I'm, just, I'm not being accurate, but I'm not worrying about it right now. Um, finishing, that was a bit longer. Had multiple operations. The painting is a weird one because it's got this two hour plus two hour queuing time um and that's where i would do this uh like pack and unpack or batch operation um for the purposes of this model right now i'm not gonna i'm not gonna worry about that but i'll publish the um the model that i create out of this so you can see how i handle that complication but for now i'll just say it's a longer process at 10 minutes and adding the decal is maybe, uh, well, that's pretty uh, relatively quick, but then he has to take his time peeling it off. Three minutes. Okay. In this case, you can also add times to conveyors. That's why they're actually kind of nice. You can add conveyors in between any of your operations, and sometimes that helps just to make things visible, that you can see the flow from one step to another. Um, and I'm going to say, Let's slowly ship materials out to the customer. All right. If you go to run it, it's going to tell me that I haven't saved my model yet. Anytime you make, anytime you go to run, Jemsim is good enough to remind you to to save your model. So it's nice. Um, so let's see. Oh, that's my in class. Demo. All right, so it's already running. And you can see material is just totally stacked up in this queue. And we can actually watch over here on this output viewer of how long it's been running. Um, but the total time still uh, now it's giving it to me in hours is 0 0.001 hours. So it's the default here is that it's running in real time, one to one, and time is ticking away slowly. You can change the units that you want this thing to display. So I don't want it to display in hours, but in minutes. So there we go. It's only it's only been running for less than one minute. So the first the first piece of an ear is still that rough sanding. Uh, so it's running very, very slowly, which is not particularly helpful for us. So because my model is not really, in, it's not running in seconds, my model is running in minutes, 
and I don't want to sit here for an hour. I'm going to just keep clicking the up arrow here and speeding up the time. So now you can see I'm moving at faster than one minute per second or simulating more than one minute per second. And now you can see the material is pounding its way through my process. A couple of things that I don't like about the defaults in Jamsim, but they're easy to fix, are these queues, for example. All the material sitting in a queue just gets, it's like it's all spilling out over the floor. If you click on a queue and down in the input editor, go to the format tab, you can change these two defaults, the maximum per line. If you made it five, for example, it, it changes it so that it doesn't spill all the floor, it makes stacks of five, which I like. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And my tendency is to do that everywhere. Now, the thing still isn't very pretty, and I've still got, uh, the default is these uh, brown spheres, um, which are pretty boring. So I'm gonna, I've stopped the model. There's a, a run key and a, and a reset key up here. So I just click reset. So it takes my model back down to zero seconds. I'm gonna slow it down a little bit. There's different things that you can do. Um, if you wanted to just make a really super simple model and you didn't, not worrying about uh, that it was a perfect picture going through, um, but just have the same picture all the way, which is fine for, for your first exercise, that's totally cool. I'm clicking on this uh, entity model and clicking right click and going down to change graphics. There are different graphics that it already has built in, rectangles and different shapes and so on. But to me, what I really like is if you import your own pictures. Um, the default is that Jamsim is gonna look for three dimension, 3D files, 3D object files, or like 3D CAD files, which you're welcome to be fancy and try to do 3D. Uh, but for this model, I just recommend staying in a two-dimensional world. And simple JPEGs or PNGs are fine. Um, let's see. So I think I've got a picture here that I created of um, kind of a skateboard with a, a skateboard shape with a decal on it. This is a PowerPoint graphic. I showed you in my sidebox briefly. I created all these images in PowerPoint. If I hit accept, now when I run the model, so now it's, of course it's not, they're not skateboards back here. It's only a veneer, but it still gets the point across and it's fine for our purposes that we're building skateboards so you know, I don't need this level of accuracy at this, at this point. Um, okay, and so you can watch the material flow through the process. Um, so honestly, at this point, I, uh, this is really all I'm asking that you do for your for this first project this is oh let's give it a quick title Ralph Nelson's simple demo
I'm sorry, I need to fix my spelling mistake. That's just driving me crazy. <laughs> Uh, I'm okay if for your first model, it's kind of a fairly straightforward, simple process flow and you've, you know, you've simplified things like this. Um, it's kind of nice if you um, maybe change, um, like add, add a, an assembly process or something like that. I'll sh I can just quickly show you. Um, Where is it? Hello. Must be just further down. There we go. Assemble. So it combines subcomponents to to create a the final assembly. And here, I'll just move this out of the way. The it needs um, a queue of both parts in front of it. Because it's going to assemble different uh, multiple components, right? So we need. So this can be a, a, a deck inventory. Um, and this could be a wheel and truck inventory. And so I'm going to make this really simple and have another outsource So this could be like the wheel supplier that provides wheels. And I've already come up with a simple graphic for my wheels. I have to find it. There we go. Again in PowerPoint. I'm going to use this connection tool again. So the wheels connect the supplier to this. And here I'm going to go out of connection mode and back in so I can connect this independently. Select this deck to the assembly. Um, okay, and now I'm gonna get out of the connection mode. So now instead of, after the, the uh, my decal process, instead of going to the entity conveyor one, I'm gonna send that to the deck inventory. So you can see my right my arrows changed now. I'm pointing up here. And the conveyor um, yeah, the next component is customer. That's still true. But here, assembly, the next component is going to be the conveyor, the MD conveyor. And now, oh, I should give the assembly some time. It's a required oh, prototype entry uh, for the assembly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So I also have to have, I have to define what the assembly looks like. And this works nice. Just, I find building some few skateboard finish board. I mean it's a crappy picture but it's okay as a finished skateboard so now on the assembly I have to tell it that the sim entity one uh, here a better way of doing it that's the finished board so assembly as a prototype entity, it, this is what it is going to create, is this finished board.
by naming these things, it makes it so much easier to be able to find them. I'll save my model and run it. And let's have a quick, oh my gosh, here. This is my Q problem again with the formatting. Five and max rows is, I don't know, 10. Which is already crazy, but so you can see I've got, now I got my boards coming through the process. You can, um, kind of move things around if, if you'd like to, to try to make your graphics look a little better. Like as you start building it, you're going to find you want to play around with, with your model, with your times to make them a little more balanced, make the whole process make kind of some more sense. Uh, <laughs> my wheels are a bit of a problem here, far too large. So I would have to, I should scale those down. Um, but there it is. It's assembling finished, you know, going through and assembling finished boards and delivering them to the customer. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to stop for a moment and get your thoughts. Um, yeah. What is so? Tell me what you think. Yeah, the view is much, much smaller. What do you guys think? Cool? Scary? Interesting? Interesting. Come on, this is worth more than one, one word. I probably spent more than two hours getting this lecture together. So that requires more than one word and feedback. Tell, tell me what you think, please. So they were interesting. Hmm. It's a lot of practice to work on it. Yeah. Uh, yes, and that's why I've um, I recognize that, and I um, I know that this is uh, kind of a challenging challenging project to tackle. That's why I've I've tried to make my requirements as simple as possible. That's why I've said I, I don't, I don't want you to worry about, you know, accurately modeling a complicated process. If, if this is the, if this is the, the project you choose to do this instead of the um, artificial intelligence modeling thing, then pick a simple process, you know, three or four or five steps is fine. Um, and you could do it like, I've added this complication of the assembly you don't need to do that. You just make it a bringing in one thing and working on it and passing it out to the customer in a few steps. Um, just, just enough. I want you to legitimately open up Jamsim, create your own model, make the connections, add some working times, so that it shows your product flowing through. Rename your processes so that they make some sense to me if I'm looking at it. Um, if they're all just called process one, process two, process three, it doesn't mean anything to me. So give them some names, give it some reasonable kind of numbers and, and, that's, and that's good enough. I, I want you to just explore this technology and recognize that it's, it's really not complicated. Modeling complicated processes will be complicated, but modeling simple processes is simple. Um, all right, let me come back then to my because I have I've made this way more complicated and I have a more I'm building a more complicated model to show you. I'll, I'll, I can share this one that I just created. Um, and I can, and then ultimately I'll share my next one. All these pictures I created, these are all just in PowerPoint. Like this is just a, a line uh, or a curve that I've created. This is, this is actually um, like it's a, just a rectangle. And then under shape format, shape effects, I did a 3D rotation and picked one that was, right, you can, just to make it 
look a little more interesting, but you don't have to do that at all. Uh, so all my, whoops, all my, um, and all the graphics that I are using in my model, I, I created in my, in PowerPoint here. Like I said, you can also download them uh, if you find just simple JPEGs or whatever. Um, you can see how I've quite okay if you, uh, if you combine things like combine the painting, combine the finishing operations, whatever. So make your model simple enough for you, for you to be able to understand it or for you to be able to model it. Um, for the exercise, I'm not sure I have it listed in the assignment, but I, but I should add it now that I'm showing you this. I, I came up with this idea of using the SIPOC after, but it, it ties in with your other course, which is great. So I'm going to ask you to show me your, show me your SIPOC. If you picked a YouTube video, give me a link to your video, show me your SIPOC, um, and show me your model. And the same thing with the, the artificial intelligence assignment. Um, it just show your experience. T tell me what you discovered, what you thought was interesting, what kind of problems you encountered. Um, and I'm also interested in hearing where you think you could use this in the future. If you had, if you had more time to study it and learn how to use this, where do you think you personally might legitimately use simulation software um, for some project or purpose in the future. Right. Okay, so I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna wrap up now. Well, I'll sh I'll, so I'll show you, this is, I'm gonna share this PowerPoint with you as well. Um, so I've laid out, like after this building the simulation, I went in and did in Jamsum, but I'm giving you, um, Kind of just what I did. I'm I've listed it out here in step by step. Add your elements. It gets you that far. Connect them. I show you how to do that. Uh, connect the material suppliers. Check the connections. Um, if you have things like assembly processes and so on, just like I did with my assembly, I'm showing you here what to do try running your model at this point, then get your processing times right, conveyor times and so on. Um, and then I'm, I'm still working to finish the last bits, just to sort of the little bit of tweaks. Uh, things like where I showed you changing the queue so that it, um, it shows a little more organized collection of materials, right? And, and so on. So I'm gonna, I still have a, just a couple of more slides to enter for these for my little step-by-step -step, and then i'll share this to the course files as well all right and there it is that's in a uh, in a nutshell excuse me, sir? yes uh, for this assignment we have to submit the bo uh, ppt file and the model file also or just combination yes. of both right yeah so same as the the same as the ai Submission. If you're if you're going to use the AI, I want the PowerPoint and your AI model for save. Or here, I want your PowerPoint and the Jamsim model save. And the model file. Right. Oh. Good question. Any other questions? Hi, Professor. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to know by what's the outcome we get by running this uh, model. Like, what are the results or something? What that we get from it? Okay, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah, I haven't really talked about that. Have you dealt with a, have you been building a value stream map in Lean yet? Yes, sir, we made it in first okay. semester. Right. So you had the experience with a value stream map and you may have had to like do a, you document your process with a SIPOC, that's great. Um, well, and even just starting with a SIPOC, oh, I can't. Believe it. My cursor keeps disappearing. Anyway, come down to my. Okay. If you're so in real life, your task is maybe to do some process improvement. 
right? Like lean is your career as it is, uh, or it has been mine. You could document a process with a side clock and say, oh, okay, here's your times, two minutes, five, one minute, two minutes, two minutes, 10 minutes. You can't look at that and say, this is a problem, or at least you'd have to be a very experienced person to be able to look at just a table of data like this and say, I can see a problem here. This is gonna run slow. These are delivered too quickly. I'm gonna need a lot of inventory space for this, whatever. If you then turn this into a value stream map, you still just have sort of static details. How many pieces are sitting in inventory? Um, how long does this take? How long does that take? What are the connections between processes? I've created all kinds of value stream maps and they're really only so useful. I actually, I don't really particularly like them because they're just these static drawings of a process and they're, they're just meant to be a snapshot. And we've always had this problem where, for example, inventory, how many parts do you represent for your inventory? And there's all kinds of debates. Do you, do you represent the maximum that ever exists, the minimum, the average? What most people do will say is, we just take a little snapshot. Don't worry about what time it is, just go out and count it. And whatever the number is, put it in. But my grief has always been with that, that at the beginning of the month or the end of the month or the middle of the month or the beginning of a shift, the inventory values can be totally different than at the end of the day, end of a shift or end of the month. And so for me, you build a value stream map as a picture and it's never actually accurate. And it's rarely is it actually representative of what is going on, where you build a simulation model and you say, this is how long this process takes and this is how long it takes to move material from here to there. And then you run it and you can see what's actually happening and you can see where your inventory is going to pile up and you can see how busy the sanding operator maybe needs to be or you can see that uh, a downstream process you can find out what your bottleneck process is and you can see okay so i know that the downstream operation is just going to sit and and so maybe you are you're designing the real process and you go well so uh, how many employees do I need? How many operators do I need to run this process? Should I invest in a second paint booth? Um, and if you have this model, you might look at it and go, this painting is really horrible. If I added a second person with a second sprayer, that's gonna, that would cost me, I don't know, you know, so many, so many thousands of dollars. Uh, what would that do to my production process? In a simulation, it costs you zero dollars and zero cents to go in and add simulate the addition of another paint sprayer um, and and then find out what happens and rerun the model so that to me it's a it is a really useful tool if you're trying to design a process or trying to improve a process um, and I would actually argue you could use it to train people on a process instead of just handing them a book you know, imagine you're being trained at uh, McDonald's or something like that, and they're saying, so this is what you have to do. Here, here's the written procedure. Your eyes are gonna glaze over. But if they said, here, we have a, a simulation of it running, and you can see how people move. You, you, here's your job. You're, you're gonna be this green person here, and your job is to do what this green person is doing in this model. And, and the jam sim I'm showing you here is not very realistic. It's just two dimensions with simple, graphics but in a more sophisticated three-dimensional model with people moving through it and so on it can be very very realistic and a uh, very compelling tool for training designing planning selling a process if you want an investor to to um, invest in your company simulate your process simulate the what you're planning on building and, and show it to them Okay, good question. Thank you for that. Thank you, Professor. Okay, any others before we adjourn for the day? So, could you provide us the link where from where we can download this jam sim? Oh, all right. Um, yeah, it's actually. It's super easy. Jam sim dot com 
it is free open source software. And there's another reason that I really like Jamson. Um, yeah, so just go to jamsim.com and um, there's a, it's really easy. There's a download button and then within the download, there are three options. Um, actually, I have this explained in another video. There's a 64-bit, a 32-bit, and then what they call a universal jar, which you would use for um, Linux or um, an OS, like a, if you're running on a Mac. You, you'd load the, download the universal version. For me, um, for the 64-bit version doesn't run on my computer properly. I get an error message do uh, with something related to Java config file not being set up properly. And I have tried to troubleshoot it and I cannot, but the 32 bit runs just fine. So if, if you, um, I would recommend the 32 bits, I would, if you're running a windows machine, honestly, just save yourself the hassle and just load the 32 bit version or the OS version, but it's free software. Um, it is, it, it's one single executable file and it um, doesn't require any installation. So you don't need administration rights on your computer. You could load it onto a USB stick and take it to any computer. Just plug it in and run it straight off. Just execute it right off the USB stick. It's an, and it's very, very small. It's another reason that I really like Jamson is that it's not some huge complicated thing to download and run. All right. Thank you for asking that question. I realized I had it in my other PowerPoint intro to Jamsim, but I didn't have it in here. Okay, so if there aren't any more questions, I'm gonna, I'll sign off for the day. Uh, wish you a good afternoon and good luck with your assignments. Um, hopefully you have some fun with it. And yeah, I would invite you or spread the word. People are welcome to reach out to me by email if you, if you are struggling with one of these um, and you need some advice, feel, feel free to reach out. Sure, Professor. Thank you so much. Okay, great. So uh, enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you next week.